All right, this is an absolutely insane question for the second to last one. It, you're gonna run out of time. It's This is a very hard section to finish. Um, the, what I would do here is because there's so many pieces moving around and the thing that we're told to solve for is a pretty basic piece of this picture, I would be guessing and checking. Um, I cannot really conceive of what's going on without having a specific value to work with. So let me just show you what I mean. Let me let me draw what they say, right? Two identical rectangular prisms, each of a height of 90 centimeters. The base of each prism is a square and the surface area of each prism is K centimeters squared. So clearly I'm gonna need the surface area of the prism. So let me just draw one, right? So one is gonna be, uh, can I draw this good? All right, let's see. It's gonna be a square top and base. And so it's gonna look like this. I'm not, not an artist for, uh, clearly. Um, so the, the area, the surface area of this is K. They're telling me that the height is 90. And remember, surface area is just the sum of all the faces, right? That you find the area of all the faces and you add them up. So what's going on here? Well, we have two of these rectangular faces, or these square faces on the top. So um, we got two of these. We got one on the top. And if I kind of draw this 3D, we've got one on the bottom, right? That one there. So let's deal with those first. And again, this is where I would start to pick a number because I'm getting confused, right? The, the, the value of these answer choices is the side length of each base. So you can think of that as X and you can do a whole equation here, but I would just pick B. That's my go-to um, guess and check choice. It's in the middle, especially here. If like I'm wrong, I can kind of understand what to do, hopefully just based on the fact that that's in the middle, right? If I'm off by a lot, right? If it's really, my number's really big, I might go to a smaller number like four. If it's smaller, but only by a little bit, I might pick nine. If it's smaller by a lot, I might pick 16. So even if B is wrong, I might not even need to check the other choices. I might just be aware enough of how wrong I am to just kind of place a pretty strong bet on a choice. The, the answers are far enough apart. So I'm gonna pick eight. It's my go-to here, it's my go-to. So I'm gonna say, all right, and just to be clear, I'll make that in green so it shows that that's my guess and check, okay? So what does that mean? Well, if the top and the bottom are both eight on a side, that's a square, so that's eight times eight times two, right? 64 is the area of that top square, but there's two. There's the one on the top and there's the one on the bottom, so that's 128 already, okay? Then we're gonna have four of these rectangular pieces, right? So that's the, the rectangular sides. I know one of the dimensions is 90, and now I know that the other is eight. So what would that come out to? So 90 times eight is 720, uh, right? 90 times eight is 720 times four. That's a total of 2,880 for the four sides, right? So the, the front, the back, the left, the right, that's the skinny sides. So that's a total of, 3,008 square centimeters is the surface area. So that's my value of K in this hypothetical guess that I've got. Now we have another set of this thing. We have another prism and they're glued together along the square base, meaning that it's gonna mess with the squares. So let me, let me do this by just drawing another one here. Um, let me make it really tall. Um, okay, so, oof. Does this look any better? No, okay. So it's kind of the same thing, right? We got our square. It's still an eight by eight. Let me use green to indicate that, right? So it's eight by eight. Um, but now think about the, the height, right? It's two of these things together. So there is another hidden square for each of them, but it's hidden. It doesn't count as surface area anymore because now they're glued and they're stuck. So we're not gonna count those, but we do have to recognize that the height has changed. Now it's 180 total because it's two of these 90s together. But look at our math, right? It's still gonna mostly be the same. This, we're still gonna have a top and a bottom that are an eight by eight, so that's still 128. Now we're gonna have four long skinny sides, but instead of 90, they're gonna be 180 times eight. So now I need the calculator, 180 times eight uh, times four is five, seven, six, zero. Add that to the 128, we get five, eight, eight, eight. So now we have to compare these, right? That's not K, that's the value of 92 47ths of K. So basically in order to get from here to here, I'm gonna multiply what I have 
by 92 over 47. So hopefully 92 over 47 times 3008 is 5888. So let's see, 92 times 3008 divided by 47 is 5888. That's my answer. I, again, I wanna be clear. I did not pick D to start because I knew it was gonna be the answer. I picked D because if it was wrong, I'd be able to adjust, hopefully, really easily. So this actually happens, well, I mean, when I guess and check, it happens 25% of the time, at least, that my answer is, my first guess is the right one. So, you know, that's pretty good. Um, I would say it actually happens more than that. I, that's just anecdotal, not based on any probability, because I, I feel like a lot of the times with these questions, it's, it's usually one of the middle answers. So I, you know, pick B, pick C, whatever. But I like B for this reason. It, it tends to be nice. Um, but to be clear, I don't know that I'd get this if I tried to do this algebraically. There are ways to do it. There are expressions that you can get. I think actually the um, the college board's explanation, if you do this test and then look at their explanation, I think it involves a very long, complicated equation. Uh, it's just too much for my brain. There's too many variables, right? The X would be the only variable, I guess, but it would appear in lots of places. And so I can't imagine it. I can't do geometry if I've got a shape that I don't even know one of the dimensions of. Now, if this were a student-produced response and we had no answer choices, this, yeah, that would make that much, much harder, and I really would need to probably figure out the, the equation. But I, I'm hoping they don't do that because it's already hard enough. So I'm hoping that they're, they're kind of testing your ability to problem solve here and either take an algebra approach or to take this more strategic guess and check approach. So especially when you get to these hard ones, when there's a store with a lot of moving parts, remember, you can sometimes work backwards. You don't always have to do it the way that your math teacher in school would want you to do it. And, and, and sticking to that textbook mentality is what's gonna get you in a lot of trouble on some of these hard questions, and it's gonna cost you time. It, just because algebra can work on every question does not mean that it is the most efficient. So your choice on the SAT is what, what can you get right and as fast as possible, and as fast as possible, and a lot of times that means using a strategy. So don't think algebra is always better. It's not, and I think here is a good example of that.